like to talk to you. Get over here. What did you want with her? Us? You recognized her. You spoke to her. Uh, uh, Dutch Black. You know something about Cecile de Polignac, and you're going to tell me what it is. Ich weiß nicht, uh, was ist das. Don't give me this. I'm no speaking any English stuff. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> now, you can make this a lot easier for both of us if you'll cooperate with me right now. Uh, uh, English, uh, uh, can ich nicht. Uh, uh, was wollen Sie? Okay, Helmut. Just don't let it happen again. Bitte. All right, excuse me. Hey. hey, you guys, what's going on here? Hey, come on, get your hands off me! Well, since the brother's finished, I'm gonna go see how she's doing. Why don't you just get out of her life? Why can't you just leave her alone? Because I need to talk to her now, all right? I don't care what you need! Hey, Ben, Ben, come on, come on. That attitude won't do you any good, huh? The guy's the number one jerk, Dad. I mean, he comes waltzing in here talking about a football game while Marley's lying in there and... He's the one that put her there. Okay, okay, you're probably right. He's probably a jerk. But I wouldn't want to be in his shoes right now, would you? Hi. Hello, Hunt. How are you feeling? All right. It's good. Molly, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Where's Peter? He's at the hospital. Is Marley all right? He called and said she was out of danger. Marley's fine. Alice, thank you for coming over. Look, Donna, why don't you just say what you have to and get it over? And now, the continuing story of another world. How was I supposed to know the guy was a picture? You don't have to yell at me. Hey, can't you get me an English interpreter? I'm a, I have rights. I don't understand a word you say. You realize that? No, I'm English. Nobody. It's about time you got here. Would you tell him I didn't know who the guy was? The guy who stopped at your table. I thought that he thought that you were Cecile, so I followed him to the John and I kind of threw him up against the wall. The John? Oh, great cat. Well, I thought he might know something. And he didn't, did he? No, he didn't. He turned out to be some German big shot. Oh, wonderful. Just tell him that I'm not a criminal so we can get out of here. Excuse me, sir. This is all a misunderstanding. Not in English. I told him in English. He doesn't understand English. Speak to him in Spanish. Why not speak Spanish? Oh, terrific. I speak a little French. Wait a minute. You speak French. Well, I don't know anything in French that I can say to a man. Okay, I'll try a little of mine. Good. I mean, the European police probably know two or three languages. Go ahead. Uh, try it. Monsieur, uh, cet homme est innocent. Innocent. Señor, aquí idioma está hablando francés. Alguien que hable francés. Assuming he even got to Mallorca. Oh, he got there. He wanted it too bad. Right now, he's probably sunning himself on some beach, checking out every blonde that passes, hoping it's Cecile. What about Kathleen? Did she go with him? I don't know. I don't know what happened to Kathleen. Maybe what her father said is true. Maybe she's uh, gone upstate for a few days. Huh? Well, why would she go upstate? It's colder there. Windier, too. That's true. Besides which, I don't know how she found the money to go to Mallorca. Hello? Tony! <laughs> oh, uh, Tony, my, my goodness. Well, yes, this is quite a surprise. Tony's a tuna. Oh, no, no, I, I feel much worse about what happened at our little dinner than you do. I mean, what with my husband just barging in and harassing you that way. I just think, uh, personal? Uh, uh, well, yes, I, I, I will be home, but... I, well, uh, no, no, Tony, I, I don't really know how it is I can help you. I, I think that... Tony? Oh... Oh, great. What? He wants to talk to me. He says it's personal. He, he's coming right over. Here? Yes. Now? Now. What are you going to do? I don't know. What, what do you do? What do you do with a gangster? Maybe I, I'd better leave. Oh, oh. no. Anywhere. I, I need you. You need me for what? Well, I don't know. Let's not panic. Uh, we're just going to play this cool. Fine. We'll play it cool, but doing what? 
Well, you just have to be my husband again. That's what. Oh. Wallingford. Hoping there'd be some improvement in Mark's condition. So was I. Only now it looks like we may have to operate before the swelling goes down. But uh, he's he's stable for oh, now, anyway. Isn't yeah, we have him on life support systems, and the um, you know the readouts are all positive. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll stop by and see him tomorrow if that's all right. I'm going to stop in and see Marley now. How's she doing? Oh, fine. She's going home today, I think. Oh, that's good. Well, I'll talk to you later. Right. Uh, Joyce, listen, um, I'm gonna be in Mr. Singleton's room, you know, if anybody calls me, okay? Well, the monitors say that he's doing fine, Dr. Frame. Well, yeah, I know, but... You're right. You're right. I mean, there really is no sense in checking every ten minutes. <laughs> Can he translate for us? Pouvez-vous traduire pour nous? Le police ne connaît ni l'anglais ni le français. Mais non, je regrette que je ne parle pas espagnol. What, what, what? What did he say? He doesn't speak Spanish either. Oh, great. Terrific. I speak English. The police speak Spanish. You and the drum speak French. We're doing fine here. Just fine. Well, I don't understand why Carl didn't know it was you buying the magazine in the first place. Same reason I didn't know Carl was involved when he bought it. Different corporate names. Right. Subsidiary companies. Well, we are now the proud owners of Fine Arts Magazine. And we got it for about half the price we would have paid if we'd bought it when we were bidding against Hutchins for it in the first place. Oh, darling, that's just wonderful. I've always loved that magazine. Whoops, excuse me. Uh, that's quite all right, Liz. Oh, come on in, Liz. <laughs> I just wanted to make sure you'd uh, read all the messages. Oh, yeah, thank you. Oh, say, listen, Felicia didn't call, did she? No. When, oh, when will that woman get that book here? What's the matter, darling? Well, Jamie wants to run the book on Catelyn's murder trial in Bravo, but how can we do it when we've only got the first six chapters and you know Felicia? Uh, I could call Felicia again. No, no, it's no good pressuring an author, especially not one like Felicia. Well, darling, why don't I drop by there on my way home? I could just drop a few casual questions. Hmm. Wouldn't hurt. Right. No pressure. No, darling. I'll be very subtle. Hmm, you always are. See you later. Okay. Let's see you later. Have a yes. good day. 
Um, if there's nothing pressing, I thought I'd go to lunch now. Sure, fine. See you later. I won't be long. Hi there, Jamie. Hey, listen, I think I might have some more information for you about that serialization by tomorrow morning. Well, I tell you, your mother's getting involved. <laughs> yes. She does tend to get results where angels fear to tread, doesn't she? Right. <laughs> yeah? Okay, see you later. <laughs> Morning, Max. What are you doing here, Hutchins? I'd like to have a few words with you. Well, I'm not in the least interested in speaking to you. Besides, I'm very busy just now. How does I really care? Oh, no. from the American consulate. He said we'd have to wait till morning. He's gone off to Madrid or something. Oh, lovely. That's great. I'm in trouble. Cecile's in trouble. Who knows what other American is in trouble? And he's gone off to Madrid! Next time, try not attacking the German consul. I already told you. How was I supposed to know he was the German consul? All of a sudden, he lays this Sprechen the Deutsch stuff on me, and the next thing I know, I'm being carted out with bodyguards on, under each arm. Sprechen the Deutsch? What? Ach, Entschuldigung. Je pensais que vous parlez allemand. Sprechen Sie Deutsch? Yeah, I speak What's going on, Captain? What's he talking about? Are you sure that's German? Yeah, I'm German. Capitán, ese es el americano de que le estaba hablando. Usted, mi amigo, es un gusano inútil debajo de mi zapato. Solo por el hecho que es extranjero, un turista, turista simple, me deja de aplastarte como el gusano que es. Is he angry with me? I don't you know. Think, uh... oh, no, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait, no, no, a spesco. How do you say a spesco in thing? Oh, no, 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 no. Please. Oh, what, what? I think I got it. What? Well, I think you, I, you just talk to me, and, and I'll translate it into French. 
for the drunk, and the drunk can translate it into to German for the officer, and the officer can translate it into Spanish for the captain. See? You're saved. You, you call that being saved? <laughs> so you went by my back, eh? I bought the magazine fair and square, Carl. Fair? You call that price fair? Yes, I think it is. Well, granted, you sold it for a lot less than you paid for it, but that's hardly my fault. <laughs> yes, you would say that. A few months ago, you deliberately drove the price of the magazine up far beyond its value to make sure that Hogan sold it to you instead of me. Then, after rubbing my nose in that, you decided to dump it on the European market so you could raise a little cash. Well, I was a European buyer. Hiding behind a subsidiary. Having the last laugh. The last laugh? Oh, you may not be laughing when I'm finished with you. Carl, really. I don't think we need to stoop to threats. As you yourself said, it was a business deal. You lost. Too bad. <laughs> then that's what you've done all your life, isn't it, Mac? What are you talking about? Hiding behind people's backs. Going behind people's backs. Never caring whose lives were hurt, what families you destroyed. What are you talking about? That may have happened once too often. Carl, aren't you a little hyper about selling a small magazine for less than you paid for it? There's one thing I know. I think it'd be a good Sandy. Idea. You can't buy Sandy back, can you? You know, I can't tell you how much I loved it that night at the country club. Do you remember? Hmm? I want you to leave. You offered him anything, didn't you? Any part of Corey Enterprises. And he said no. Your own son said no. How'd that feel, Mac? Huh? How do you feel? This discussion is over. Get out. I mean, how did it feel knowing that your own son would prefer to build his future with Carl Hutchins rather than have anything to do with his old man or his old man's company? I want to know, how did the successful father feel about that? I said get out, and I mean it. Huh? Touched a nerve, have I? You, you deliberately involved Sandy in things that you knew would hurt him, that you knew would hurt his family. You did it on purpose. Look here, you. Don't you give me any of your pious, holier-than-thou family speeches. I know what you're interested in. Always have been money, that's all. Just money. You're a vicious liar. Am I? You've done nothing but hurt people since you came to Bay City. Your own son, as well as mine. Now, you're going to get out of here, or am I going to call security and have you thrown out? Because I'll do it. Believe me, I would do anything on Earth to get rid of you. Anything. I do believe Mr. Corey has lost his temper, among other things. Excuse me, dear. I have to go to the studio. I have to re-record commercial voiceovers before the air show. Yeah, you have to leave now. What about Tony the Tuna? <sighs> well, he'll just have to wait. Well, I'll go with you. Oh, oh, oh no. You stay right here, Wallingford. No, no, I, I don't want to insult a gangster. Now, look, you be a sweetheart, honey. You you can stall him. You can. And uh, I won't be long. I, I, probably no more than an hour. And, uh, okay, uh... I don't think he'll be here for 30 minutes anyway. Just stall him, all right? You know, deep down, he's not a nice man, you oh, know? I know, but you are, and you're so cute in your little jacket, okay? Oh. Now, let's see. I won't be long. I promise I have my teeth, my purse, my fur. All right, now, uh, I think I better take the stairs. You know, that elevator they're repairing, it takes forever. Now, I think if you offer him some tea. tea. He loves tea. I, I don't know why he loves tea, but tea, okay? I'll, I'll be back. Right. And Stalin. <laughs> Wallingford, how do you get yourself into these situations? He's a gangster. He can make you disappear again. <laughs> Brother. Maybe Felicia just forgot something. Oh, hello. You're a relief. Come on in. Thank you. Um... 
Is Felicia here? Uh, sorry. Did Tony send you? Tony? No. Oh, good. Then what do you want? Um, I, I, I would like to see Felicia. Uh, when will she be back? Maybe an hour. Oh. Well, I didn't understand that she had hired a new secretary. I'm not the secretary. I'm Wallingford. Oh, excuse me. Um, I'm Rachel Corey, oh. a friend of Felicia's. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. Um, you're staying here? Well, not exactly. Oh. Uh, that must be Tony the Tuna. Uh, look, don't go. Well, why don't you just have a seat? Suite de hotel más dormitorios diferentes para cada uno. Oh. Oh. Ah. I know what he said. You don't have to translate things like that. Entonces, ¿quién es esta mujer a que le tiene que defender el honor? They stand to the foe that the ira, uh, ira verteidigt, uh, must. A la don de la femme que la se le tapareer. Then who is this beautiful young woman that you must defend her honor? She's a nun. Say that? Trust me. Why can't you just tell the truth? Because the truth doesn't make any sense. Trust me. Translate. Cette femme est une nonne. were disconnected? Yes. Whoever did it disconnected the, the monitors here at the nurse's station. And if you hadn't walked in to his room, I you know, did it. I know. I don't even know what made me go down the hall at that time. I, I just wanted to see him. Security is sending up some more people. Oh, and the, uh, the electrician said that they would send up someone as well. Did anybody call the police? Yes, they're on their way. Okay. Oh. What's well, the reading on the EEG? Well, it's normal. No, it's a brain fuck. Oh, well, thank God. Yeah. Alice. Yeah. Alice, this had to have been done, done by someone who was familiar with hospital procedure. Someone who knew how to disconnect the monitor. I know, Peter. That's what's so scary. I mean, whoever it is is probably still on duty. When are they going to try again? is still critical, but it, at least he's stable again. And there was no brain damage? No, no, thank God. I mean, I must have gotten in there just seconds after the life support system was turned off. And you saw no one leaving the room? No, I didn't. I wish I could help you. Look, I'm just glad you were there to help Mark. Um, Miss Campbell? Yes? Would you show this officer to Mark's room, please? Absolutely. Putting a 24-hour guard in his room. Okay, thank you. Listen, if you don't need me, I'd really... I'd, I'd like to go see him again. I'll talk to you later, though. All right, okay. Close call. No. MJ, it seems pretty clear from what just happened that someone other than Donna tried to kill Mark. Well, obviously Donna didn't do it since she's in jail. But doesn't that at least help clear her? Look, Peter, no offense, but your family is one of the wealthiest in the state, and as everybody knows, there's very little that money can't buy. For heaven's sakes, MJ, my sister is incapable of killing someone. And she is also incapable of paying someone else to do it. All I know is that someone doesn't want Mark to wake up. And I want to get that someone. What a 
pleasant surprise. I had no idea you'd be here. How are you? Fine, thank you, Mr. Jones. And you? Oh, I'm fine. And Tony, please. Uh, Miss Corey came to see my wife. She just got here herself, right? Right. Well, I know how busy Miss Gallant is. Uh, I mean, Mrs. Gallant. Mm. Well, but the truth is, I find myself in a bit of a bind. I, I really need some information. Well, maybe uh, we can help. Gosh, I hope so. If you or Mr. Gallant could help me out, it would really be a lifesaver. I need to locate a mutual business associate of mine, a fellow named Cass Winthrop. Cass? Uh, yes, nice guy. Well, I know Cass, too. Uh, what about him? Well, I need to find him. Some really urgent business. Uh, do you have any idea where he is? No, I'm afraid I don't see much of him. Oh. He works a lot with Felicia, however. Uh, yes, that's true, but neither my wife nor I have seen him in several days. Oh, it's a shame. Oh, well, that's the way it goes. Why don't you just give me your telephone number, and in case he's in touch with us, I'll have him call you. Well, oh, thank you. That'd be very nice of you. Oh, oh that's the tea kettle. My wife told me to make you a pot of tea. Oh, goodness, no. I'm, I'm afraid I can't stay that long, but thank you anyway. Well, why don't I go and turn the water off? You two go right on, and I'll... Excuse me. Uh, thank you. Uh, now, what was that number where you can be reached at? Listen, Buster. I was there the other day when you came waltzing in in the Spanish garb, remember? So I know that you know Cass Winthrop left the country. How, I don't know, but somehow he made it. So forget about the number. Just give him a message for me when you see him, okay, Brad? Sure, sure, tell me anything, anything. Tell him when he comes back to either bring me the money he owes me or bring an undertaker. Undertaker? Uh, yes, I've got it. Oh, Mrs. Corey, how pleasant to see you again. I'm sorry I can't stay in chat. Well, so am I. <laughs> oh, thank you, Mr. Gallant. Well, by the way, have you uh, seen the new exhibit at the museum? Yes. It's lovely, isn't it? Oh, exquisite, exquisite. Well, I, uh, I guess I'll be going now, and please give my best to your husband when you see yes, him. Yes, I will. Goodbye for now. Goodbye. So long, Tony. I'm scared to death there for a minute. Why, he's a perfectly nice gentleman. Uh, we just had dinner with him the other Are night. Are you kidding? He's the biggest gangster this side of the Mississippi. He's the reason I have to pretend to be Felicia's husband. Oh, well, I didn't think Felicia... Stop, Mary. A gangster? Molly, for suppose you tell me what's going on. Oh, well, I can try. But why don't you sit down? This is going to take a while. Somehow, I had a feeling it would. It smells good. Oh, hi. <laughs> I wanted to surprise you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You have. It's a cake, I hope. You hope, huh? <laughs> Well, life is a constant experiment. <laughs> How was your court case? My court case. Oh, right. That was this morning. Yeah, no problem there. Uh, just a, a plea bargain case. And then I stopped by to see Donna. Hold her hand, mostly. Oh, I know. She must be going through absolute torture. Yeah. Accused of something she didn't do. Mm, thanks. Yeah, and then, then the big event happened. Oh, would you get me something to drink? Sure. What would you like? Fruit juice would be great. Okay. So what was the big event? Um... Well, apparently someone slipped into Mark's hospital room today and unplugged the life support system. Oh, no. Oh, that's horrible. How awful. Yeah, you can say that again. Oh. I liked him so much. He was such a nice man. I'm so sorry. Well, I didn't say he died, honey. Uh, thank heavens. Alice walked in just the right time and reconnected the system and brought him around again. Oh. That's wonderful. That's, oh, it's wonderful. Yeah, it sure was. <laughs> Pure luck. I mean, otherwise, well, it didn't happen, fortunately. 
Is, uh... <clears throat> is Mark all right? Did they, they do a brain scan? Yeah, apparently he's fine. Look, I'll, I'll tell you about it just a second. I'm just gonna freshen up, okay? Okay, sure. Well, yes, it keeps expanding, doesn't it? It's going to take longer. Yes, I'm afraid so. Did he come? He sure did. Miss Co uh, excuse me, Mrs. Corey thought he was a classy businessman. Ah, <laughs> oh, Rachel, you met Mr. Jones. Tony the Tuna. Oh, boy. Wallingford was trying to explain to me. Yes, I told her that we may have located Mr. Pollock. Yes, something, isn't it? Well, I'm not exactly sure locating Cecile in and of itself is a good thing, but if it's going to help Catelyn, I guess I'm all for it. Well, you certainly have been leading, leading quite a full life. <laughs> Thanks. Yes, well, I have to keep busy, I guess. Tell me, did you really spend a whole night in a cage with a gorilla? Wallingford, you've got to stop telling people that. Did you? Well, it was just one night. She was a female gorilla. Her name was Carolyn. It's just the idea of it. What? Is that how you see me? Is that really how you see me? Hey, it worked, didn't it? I mean, as soon as they found out that I thought the guy was making a pass at a nun, they understood. Yeah, right. I walked right out of there. <laughs> it's a good thing the German guy had diplomatic immunity. They would have hauled him in for questioning. Very funny, but uh, you owe me one, <laughs> Rinth Ripper. Remember that. Yeah, and I'm sure you'll never let me forget it. <laughs> you know something? Now that that's all over and done with, I'm getting kind of excited again. Excited, huh? Yeah. What are you excited about? Well, I'm positive Cecile is here in Mallorca. I mean, that guy wouldn't have stopped by your table if he didn't think that you were somebody that he knew. You know, Cecile obviously must have smiled at him once upon a time, you know. It's hard to forget that smile. So you said... Hey, maybe I'll pay the guy a visit in the morning and show him Cecile's photograph. Which one do you think I should use? This one shows how really beautiful she is. But this one, uh... It might be better for identification purposes. What do you think? May I ask you a question? Sure. Where are your brains? I mean, will you take a look at this island? It's beautiful. The weather is wonderful. The people are charming. The ocean is spectacular. <clears throat> I mean, would Cecile, your Cecile, would she have come here and never asked you to join her? If, 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 if she really cared? Will you think about that, Cass? The fact that she never asked you to join her here in paradise? You're, you're chasing a dream, Cass. Wake up. I'm not going to lose my enthusiasm just because you're jealous of Cecile. What? Cecile loves me. And I'm sorry if you have a problem with that. I am not jealous. I am just trying to reason with you. Oh, come on. I just mentioned her name and you fly off the handle. You're jealous. It's obvious. But I'll try not to hold it against you. Obvious, huh? Right. You want obvious? I'll give you obvious.
you just relax? You had a long day. Mm. I know. I, I just, uh... Suddenly, I feel so exhausted. You were saying about Mark? Oh, uh, yeah. Um, the, uh... The police uh, have put a uh, around-the-clock guard in his room. I'm not surprised. But I, uh... I don't think they stand much of a chance to, uh, find the person who did it. Well, I guess not. Mm. Unless there were witnesses. Uh, no. No, no one saw anything. Oh, what a shame. Well, at least I guess it clears your sister's name, hmm? Uh, no. Would you believe it? The, uh... The police, uh, MJ said she, uh, she couldn't rule out the possibility that Donna bought, uh, paid someone t to kill me. Oh, well, that's ridiculous. Is that her only reason? Peter? Well, uh, I'm sorry, I, uh, I just feel such... Sorry, sorry. Just rest. Go to sleep. It's the furthest thing from all right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I guess I shouldn't have talked to you that way. You guess? I have come all the way to Mallorca to help you. I've been playing for Cecile for the last two months. I was even up all night trying to get you out of jail. All I ask is that you be civil. All right. All right. I shouldn't have said what I said. I should have realized how sensitive you are. So, do you forgive me? Well, do you? I'm thinking about it. I just have to keep reminding myself that you're not Cecile, that's all. this afternoon. Who? Carl Hutchins. What on earth did he want? To complain, mostly. Because you bought the magazine out from under him? Yes. And? And? When he couldn't get any satisfaction about that, he started in about Sandy. Oh. He really enjoyed rubbing it in, too. About Sandy deserting me. For him? Yes. Darling, I'm so sorry. 
I wish there was something I could do or say. It's awfully hard to try and figure out why Sandy's behaving the way he's behaving. I still love him. I know that. I'll always love him. Darling, I hate to say this, but I don't think that piece of information Sandy would care two pins about. I'm sorry. He's just so involved with himself right now. But that's all Hutchins is doing. He's twisted Sandy's values around. I know it sounds old-fashioned to say it, but there are some people who are just evil without necessarily there being any good psychological reason for it. They just are. And you think Carl is one of them? Yes, definitely. The man is pure evil. It's Emily. Yes, he's here. He's asleep. No, I put enough in his drink. I just can't help thinking. Maybe Peter doesn't have to be. I know. Yes, I understand. Monday and Monday, be with CTV for the shocking four-hour miniseries, Fatal Victim. <laughs>